Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tales of Our Times. This is a show where we discuss the stories that move us, what makes them so meaningful, and why others could or should find meaning in them as well. This is not a spoiler-free show, so bear that in mind as you continue to listen. We tackle books, movies, comics, and more. Where there's a story, there's a reason to read. I'm your host, Amanda Stevens. And as you might have guessed, this is going to be another special format episode. To close out the year, I thought it would be a fun idea to catch up with some of the other hosts here at RTI and talk to them about what stories moved them the most during the year 2023. In this episode, we'll be discussing the stories that we were touched by the most, we'll skip over the summaries for the most part, though there may still be spoilers, and we'll talk about why it grabbed us so much. I hope that you're looking forward to it as much as I am. And without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome, Chris. Nice yes. to have you on the show. Very nice to be on the show. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to introduce yourself first? Uh, well, I would hope that the RTI listeners might already know me a little bit uh, mm-hmm. because I read the news often and I have uh, two shows, Status Update, where we read the listener letters and also where we've mentioned many of uh, people writing in about your show, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, and also the Straight Up Podcast, which is about... Uh, international affairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think I, I definitely have a lot of people who ask me about those affairs, and I do try to recommend them to your show, because uh, yes. I, I don't know anything about <laughs> it. I'm here talking about movies. That's and, actually one of my other favorite things. Before I was a politics major in college, I was first a film major, and oh. then I switched. Yeah, but I still love film. So so then what what story of 2023, or just uh, over this year, really grabbed you? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because when you first asked me about this, I, I probably like should have thought a little bit deeper. But just the <laughs> very first thing that came to mind is the one that I'm sticking with, hmm. with which is the show on Apple TV called Foundation. Hmm. Uh, so it's a sci-fi series. It's based on a series of novels, which I have not read yeah. uh, by uh, Isaac Asimov. But mm-hmm. I am familiar like with Asimov in a general way, which yeah. is actually helpful, which I'll explain in a second. Okay. Um, and so... But I, it, there's just a part of the show that really ha, uh, has stuck out to me, uh, mm-hmm. which has to do with the emperor. So I can get into that. But yeah, oh, I mean, I think I think that's going to lead into the third question. So I'll just ask you, like, what about Foundation really grabbed you? Well, I, overall, there's one particular part, but at first, I feel like I need to just explain the premise of the show a little bit because yeah, I think it's it. really cool, and it's also very expensive. Oh yeah. So like the production values are really high, but basically, it's set like many years in the future, like in in this theoretical future where humans are living like all over space. Mm-hmm. There's a empire which has been <laughs> in power for 12,000 years. So it's been well, like- so We've been living in space for a long time. Right, so this is like very, very far into the future. Okay. And also, if you've ever read any other Asimov books, there's hmm. often about like robotics. Anyway, but the, it, that's not really the point. Okay, the point okay. is just that like most of his stories are about robotics, but in this series, it's like so far into the future that there has been like in the past, a war between people and robots. Oh. And like all robots were killed and like they're illegal now. So there can no longer be robots. It's kind of like Dune in that way. Uh, Yeah. So just yeah, yeah, yeah. for Asimov That's, fans, they might that... want to know that. This yeah, is yeah, not yeah. like a robotics based show. But anyway, so the the cool part of the show that I like is about the this basically the premise of the emperor, which is that he mm-hmm. is, there was like a first emperor who conquered the whole universe or galaxy or whatever. Yeah. And then because he was like so unsure if anyone else could do that Mm -hmm. instead of making an heir he has just like cloned himself for eternity oh so basically (laughs) yeah so there's always so he's just been a series of clones for twelve thousand years and there's always three of them alive at any given moment there's like a young one a middle-aged one and an old one. This is like giving Greek mythology (laughs) 2.0. Kind of, yeah. (laughs) And so the the middle-aged one is always the one that's actually in control. Uh The young one is like basically in training. Uh And the old one is kind of just like an advisor. Okay. Uh, And so, but they have like a bunch of them from all three ages sort of like on ice in case one of them dies for some reason. Uh So they can like kind of bring them back and they can transfer their memory and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, good, good, good. So like I like all the story that has to do with that. I I just Mm. find that to be like a really interesting premise because it's actually realistic to me. Like, I feel like that's something that could actually happen. I mean, we have like presidents for life. Yeah. Right. So that. 
but that and, was and the I first can totally thing that popped imagine in my head. the megalomania of yeah. someone being like, "No, literally, no one can else can do this. Not even my son or like my right. my daughter, but like a clone of myself. That's I'm like the, the only, only person that I trust to do this for yeah. eternity." Yeah. Uh, so and th- anyway, there's some twists about what happens with all the clones and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But like, that's kind of the part of the show that I like. Yeah, that's what stuck um, out to you. There's a whole other part of the show, which is the other main storyline, which I actually don't like as much, which is about like a guy who figured out, I think they call it like psycho history. And what? Ba- basically, he's like the ultimate Google al- algorithm guy. Oh, yeah. So he know like somehow through math, he can see like the entire future. Mm-hmm. And so he's basically like. He says there's going to be some disaster in the near future. And like in one version of history, the disaster period only lasts 3000 years. Mm -hmm. But in the other version, it's like, you know, tens of thousands of years. And so like either way, it's going to be bad. But he's trying to make it so that it's only 3000 years long. It's like that that like forward thinking wellness term of like harm reduction. (laughs) Yeah. So. But, you know, to people who are living in the present, it makes seems to make no difference. Yeah, it really doesn't matter right. if you're just going to be alive for like 100 years. It's right. kind of like they both suck. So. And so anyway, there's a couple of characters who are basically like psychics because they mm-hmm. can kind of like see into the future. And I'm not really like, I don't really like this whole part of the show because to me yeah. it's like less sci-fi-y. Like mm-hmm. they've come up with this scientific explanation, which is like it has to do with math. But like. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's like science equals magic, like right. that trope. Basically. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that. Like that that's gotten me interested already. Yeah, no, I think it's still a great show and like even mm-hmm. if you can deal with the psychic stuff, like I'm sh- like the characters and stuff are good. The acting is mostly good. Mm-hmm. Uh and it's got some like it's on the second season and there was like a pretty big twist in the end of the second season, so wow. uh, I'm definitely excited to watch the third. Yeah. Well, look forward to it. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Yep, no problem. And welcome, Sharon, back to the studio. Hello, hello. Good to be back. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to have you on our show. Thanks, thanks. Um, In case somebody didn't hear your other episodes, is there anything you would like to say to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I was on Amanda's show where I talk about um, Shadow and Bone. Also, mm-hmm. I we did a flip episode where I interviewed Amanda about her favorite work, which is uh, Over the Garden Wall. Yes, that was very fun for mm-hmm. me. And I also, I'm also a show show. I'm also a host here. A show host. <laughs> I'm a show host here yeah. at RTL. I have two shows. Monday it's Come Along. Wednesday it's That's Debatable. So you know, mm-hmm. go check them out. Now you're someone who's like really in like the artsy scene, and I feel like the the kind of like hip and trendy scene. So I wanted to ask you, like, what Mm -hmm. was a story or something that really grabbed you in 2023? Sure. So um, recently I've been reading a poetry book called Rivka or Rivka in English. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is written by a writer called Mohammed Mm Akkurd. So he's from Palestine. He's specifically from the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of um, Old Jerusalem. And Mm -hmm. of course, like this is a very important book that I have to read. Um, It's from my friend Tati. Tati, thank you for lending me your copy. Mm. And um, I... You know, as a fellow English major, I'm sure you know this feeling that I feel like poetry and literature, the words that writers could use, they not only give us a a space to learn more about something Mm. that we probably have never heard of, and also, especially a poet, they use poetic ways, Mm. a welcoming way, and I think a very significant way to let you know about their realities Mm. in a very welcoming and warm way way so yeah huge shout out to the author Muhammad Akkurd and yeah. I've been reading a book I'm halfway in so I'm not finished yet yeah, yeah. but yeah highly recommend Rivka to anyone who's interested I, yeah. I mean I think that's actually almost more of a recommendation if it's like I haven't finished it but this mm. is already like my 2023 pick <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's already grabbed halfway me in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and at I the mean, end of the yeah. year you have everything to compare it to yes. oh, so yeah. and like you said poetry like uh, really good poetry I, everyone kind of like I, everyone rags on poetry, but I think mm-hmm. like that might be because you just didn't read anything that grabbed you personally. Yeah. But like I think good poetry really speaks to like beyond just words, but like feelings and emotions yeah. that can really well, you know what, instead of me going on, what what <laughs> grabbed you about mm-hmm. about this book? Like what really spoke to you? Sure. I, I really I really do encourage like everybody to have a curiosity for, for pretty much anything. Hmm. So I've been curious about what daily life is like as a Palestinian, especially living hmm. under Israeli occupation. And that's yeah. a narrative that me as a Taiwanese young person, I've never heard of. None of my education. We never talk about it. I was going to say the same thing yeah. that like I actually am incredibly uninformed mm-hmm. and sometimes like misinformed. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Oh, yeah, we can go on. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I feel like Rivka by Muhammad is, so he is, such, I think he's such a powerful poet because, okay, probably most people think of poetry as just pure fiction, but I disagree. It, well, it definitely depends, but I feel like mm. for a Palestinian poet, so much of it, how much of it is inspired in, and informed by their everyday real lives, their reality, yeah. and they tell it to you, uh, by way of poetry. Mm-hmm. So what really stood out to me um, is a um, poem called Rivka, which is the, the name titular, of the book. Yes. The titular poem. Also, Rivka was the name of Muhammad's grandmother, um, who oh, who no. um, he was very close with. And uh, Rivka was about how grandma lost their family home in Palestine. And there is a line that I really, really like. I know we have like copyright thing, but I'm just going to read you can, a you couple can, of lines. No, no, no. You can say the lines. Yeah, That's a couple okay. of lines is fine. As so, long as we're not reading the whole book on air. Yeah. So the other day I actually talk about these lines in my other episode. So grandma was saying that. So their house was taken. And mm-hmm. she said, let's say it was devoured by the sea. Don't worry. It will wash ashore. No matter how deep it drowns, the truth always washes ashore. Yeah, I really like these lines. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like, I say this a lot on this show, but like truly things like that give me chills. It tears like, me up, yeah. really, really evocative. Mm-hmm. So highly recommend mm-hmm. Rivka by Mohammed Arkert. It's a red cover. So should you see it in a bookstore, you, you wouldn't miss it. It's a also, bright red cover. Also, for people who just speak English primarily, it's spelled R-I-F-Q-A. Yes. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Check it out. And Sharon, thanks for coming back on the show and sharing something so, so meaningful. Thank you so much. And happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. And welcome, Oleg. Thanks for coming. Hi. Thank you for having me here. Really excited about this episode. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you would like to say to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Oleg, and I'm the chief editor of RTI's Ukrainian language service, where I also have a podcast show called Taiwan Calling. Mm. So if you do happen to speak Ukrainian, please go and check out. I also am a part-time host in the English department, where I have a show that's called In Taiwan We Speak. Mm -hmm. And there we try to introduce to the world Taiwan's fascinating linguistic diversity. Mm-hmm. That's a heck of a sentence to get through. Yes. But like there, there is, for anyone who doesn't know, there is a lot of linguistic diversity in Taiwan. When you start digging into native languages that were spoken here, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's really a lot to get into. So whether or not it's something that you're just interested in learning more about or something that you already are interested in, definitely check it out. It's a show that'll give you a lot to think about. Yeah, you'll be mind blown. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was. I was really excited when I saw you like launch that show. But anyway, today we're here to talk about what what story really grabbed you in 2023. So today here with me, I brought a book that I finished recently. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's my favorite book of the year, but yeah. it's one of the, f- well, favorite it, it, books that I have this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Um, well, for me, 2023 was all about learning a lot because, mm-hmm. you know, as a Ukrainian, we're learning more about ourselves, trying to decolonize our knowledge of our own history. And it's also it, it was also a good year for me to learn about Taiwan since I only came here two years ago. Mm. And Taiwan's history is quite similar to Ukraine's in the, the way we have, you know, similar yeah. colonial experiences. It's it, not the same. It but rhymes, we might say. They're right. not the same, but in, exactly, in yeah. uh, English poetry, we say things like history History does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Yes. Like they're really close. And if you just have the same mindset to approach this topic, you can actually look at them both together. So hmm. this book is about Taiwan's history, and it's called Green Island by Shona Young Ryan. Shona Young Ryan is a Taiwanese-American writer, and she's a novelist. Mm. So it's yeah. a novel, it's a fiction book, but it's based on actual historical events, yeah. specifically uh, on the history of Taiwan's white terror. And um, Green Island, I don't know for those of you who visited Green Island, I, you might know. I just learned this today from you earlier. <laughs> it's quite a popular touristic spot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really want to go. I've never been, actually. Oh, mm-hmm. So it's a tiny island to the east coast of Taiwan. Hmm. And besides having a beautiful nature and being famous for scuba diving, I believe. Yeah, I, I always knew it as being famous for turtles. All right. Yeah. So wildlife. Yeah, it's also famous for having... Um, 
a human rights museum that previously mm. was actually a prison and one of those prisons in Taiwan uh, that during white terror mm-hmm. uh, housed political prison yeah. prisoners. Yeah, and it's I heard it's a very scary place. Yeah, so oh. in the book you learn um, well. There's this story of a woman who was born on the same day when the white terror started, actually. Oh my god! And then it just—I'm not gonna spoil it, obviously. It mm-hmm. just uh, guides you through her life, mm-hmm. the story of her father's disappearance, yeah, and the story of his life. Uh, well, they're all. All their like lives, they're, they're basically, after lives. he came back from the Green Island. Ooh, yes. fascinating. And so that I, I assume that that's why it really grabbed you this year, was like on your own journey, kind yeah. of like learning more about Taiwan's own history. Yeah, exactly, because my knowledge of this was very, you know, encyclopedic, so I knew yeah. some facts. But then when you read this book, although it's a fictional story, but it's based mm-hmm. on actual human experiences and the author there in the end she outlines what kind of actual historical figures inspired her characters and you get to see you know a a close-up look into human people's lives during that period not just you know historical timelines that we read on wikipedia Mm -hmm. i think i i think that's always my favorite way to learn history is like through not not exclusively fictionalized but you know it gives you like a point of view that you can experience and really try to empathize with Exactly. You try to understand what happened. Yeah. So that sounds really awesome. That's so cool. Thank you for coming on, Oleg. Thank you for having me. And please do check out this book. Definitely. And we're good. So welcome, Iris. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. For the first time on our show. And uh, is there anything you'd like to say to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Iris Xu. Mm-hmm. I am an English host at Radio Taiwan International. Mm-hmm. And I work with amazing Amanda here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's exciting to have you here. So what um, is a movie or a show or a story that really grabbed you in 2023? I think what I always go back to mm-hmm. rewatch is a 90s TV show called The West Wing. Yeah. Which is about a group of White House staff and mm-hmm. all the drama, all the things that yeah. they have to go through every day. Ugh. You talk about it like a really stressful job. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I like I remember I heard a lot about that TV show at that time, and it is one that I still hear a lot about from time to time. I think it sounds like it would be, or it sounds like a really popular comfort show. It really is. Mm-hmm. It It's very comforting, and it also makes you think. Mm-hmm. So what what jumped out to you about it this year in uh, 2023? I think now, in hindsight, watching mm-hmm. all almost all the episodes, I feel like it's, it's the shows, you know, the perseverance and mm-hmm. the resilience that all these staff, like fictional staff, mm-hmm. have on the you know obviously they're human and they yeah. they deal with so many issues on a daily basis <sighs> where sometimes they things don't go their way and it feels like really high stakes issues like yeah. it feels like if you work in the white house mm-hmm. every issue even if it's not feels like a high stakes issue mhm exactly a bill doesn't pass well it's it almost seemed like the end of the world yeah, yeah. to them but then the next day they still you know pack Get out of work. work. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like that does feel like a message that I needed in 2023. (laughs) I think we all need that message. (laughs) Definitely. So thanks for thanks for bringing that back to me, Iris. (laughs) Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you for joining me on Radio Taiwan International. And special thanks to all the guests who came to help me today. My fellow RTI hosts, Sharon Lin, Chris Gorin, Iris Su, and Oleg Shin. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about the stories that moved us the most in 2023. And on a final note, I want to thank everybody one more time for listening to us during our first year here at Tales of Our Time on Radio Taiwan International. Whether or not you listen on the radio or online, it's your listenership that really makes this worthwhile. And again, a special thanks to everyone who sent in feedback earlier in the year. So from all of us here at RTI, and especially from me here on Tales of Our Time, I'd like to wish you a happy new year, and we'll see you in 2024.